Okay, welcome back. Here we are in the fifth and final part of lesson three of the Build Your Own Business Website tutorials. In this part of the lesson, we'll look at the file structure on our domain. So the very first thing we have to do is log into our control panel. So you can either do that by typing in Bluehost, or I have a link here on lesson three that will take us to Bluehost. We have our domain up there. Go ahead and enter our password. and log into the control panel. Here we are at our control panel. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the files section and select file manager. Now here we are having opened up to our home directory. The home directory is essentially the lowest level of organization of our hosting account. That level of organization is home to slash BYOB tuto for me. Inside this folder, everything associated with my account exists. So all my mail is here. Any public FTP stuff I may do is here. Other folders can be in there as well. But the main folder is the public HTML folder. The public HTML folder is the traditional folder in which websites are placed. This is the folder that we earlier referred to as our root directory because the domain name that we have, in this case www.byobtutorials.com, points directly to this folder. And now every computer on the internet, or at least every router on the internet, knows that this is the specific location of that domain name. This, of course, is where WordPress installs. Now, before WordPress was installed, the only thing that was in this directory was this folder, CGI bin. And CGI bin is an empty folder. There's, there's no information in it at all at this point. And we won't be putting any information in there ourselves. And everything else, all of these other files that were created, were all created by the WordPress installation. Besides placing a bunch of stuff in the root directory, WordPress also creates three additional directories. The first directory it creates is WP Admin. And now you're familiar with WP Admin because that was what we used in order to log in without, a, uh, without the login button on our website. But that's as far as your interaction with WP Admin is going to go. There is no reason for you to ever change or alter in any way any of the files inside of WP Admin. These are files that are necessary for WordPress to do its thing, and there's never going to be a reason for you to alter or adjust those. Similarly, the same thing happens with WP Includes. WP Includes includes a whole bunch of files that WordPress uses in order to do what you want it to do, and none of those files should be edited by the user. However, the third folder that is created is WP Content. WP Content is, in fact, a place where all of the customization that you make to WordPress is going to go. And you can see that WP Content has created two different folders within itself. The first one is Plugins, and if we open up Plugins, you can see that that there is already one plugin installed and that is Akismet. But every other plugin that we install we will put into this folder plugins. And then you have the folder themes. If you look inside the folder themes you'll see that it has the default theme which is the one that we're using right now and the classic theme which is the gray or green one. In a future lesson we're going to install themes in this directory ourselves as well and that's where themes will go. So all of our customizing will go inside this WP content folder. And now the reason that that is the case is because WordPress gets upgraded fairly regularly and that means you know several times a year there are upgrades for WordPress and you wouldn't have to want to upgrade all of your customization every time WordPress was upgraded. And so they've segregated off all of the potential customization into this one folder that doesn't really get changed during the upgrade process. 
that makes your job a lot easier when upgrade time comes along. It is important though that you understand that WP content and plugins and themes are the folders where you'll be uploading new files and folders as well as we work on customization. And we'll talk about that and demonstrate it that extensively in lesson four of this series. That, and that pretty much concludes lesson three. In the next lesson we'll, we'll learn how to use the FTP file transfer protocol to install themes and to install plugins.